Hi, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel. Today, we're gonna to be continuing on our paint mixing journey. We're gonna be talking about the all important complementary colors, what they are and how artists use them. So let's get started. Complementary colors are colors that are directly across from each other on the color wheel. And the three most common types of complementary colors are red and green, yellow and violet, and blue and orange. When you put two complements next to each other, this creates visual dynamics, contrast, and intensity. And you may be wondering why. Well, it has everything to do with our eyes. The cones in our eyes, called photoreceptors, are responsible for how we view color by responding to wavelengths of light. Each color has its own wavelength, so cooler colors, like blue and violet, have higher wavelengths of light, compared to warmer colors like orange and red, which have lower wavelengths of light. And you may be wondering, why is this even important? Well, let me show you. Stare at the blue square on the screen. The longer you look at it, the less sensitive your eyes are becoming to blue light wavelengths. In a moment, when I remove the blue square, continue to stare at the center of your screen. Due to the eye fatigue we just created, you are going to perceive less blue light high frequency waves in the white of the background, which makes you more sensitive to the opposite low frequency waves, which are orange. So now, you should be able to see a faint orange square. So, if you put two complements next to each other, not only does it create visual intensity, but it also creates balanced eye stimulation that makes our brain feel very satisfied. Now, of course, before science discovered why we think complements go together, artists were using it for centuries. They would apply it to help build balanced compositions and to help guide the audience to specific focal points. As fun as it is to create visually stimulating compositions, there's another thing that complements can do, which is when mixed together, they mute each other down and create neutrals, which is super beneficial to artists when they're building their color palettes. If you were able to mix two true complements together, they would neutralize each other and become a neutral gray or a black. However, paint that you can buy in the store will never actually get you to a true complement. So that means that when you mix the two complements together, what you'll end up getting is some form of gray and possibly some form of brown, but it will never be true neutral. However, we can use that to our advantage. So for today's demo, I'm going to be working with oil paints because they are more pigmented than acrylic paints, but you can do this with either. We are going to create a seven step complementary color scale to evaluate how mixing two complements together can shift saturation and value. And we are going to label what these new colors can be used for. I am starting with red and green, and I'm gonna to try to take equal parts of both to create my neutral, and I'm gonna adjust as I go. And it creates this brown color. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to take a bit more of that red and create two more shifts down. Cleaning my brush thoroughly and then doing the same with the side that's green. Now on to our labeling. Our center neutral is a warm brown color. And as a side note, we could cool that down if we wanted to by adding a bit of blue. And then the green side of this scale is what I call earthy greens and are great for a neutral and natural green color palette. And then on the red side, we've created dark reds. So this is just one way we can lower the value of red without having to use black. Next, we are going to move on to yellow and violet. Again, I'm going to start by trying to mix that middle neutral value. And once I feel satisfied, I am going to create two more steps by adding that neutral to the yellow and then cleaning my brush thoroughly and going ahead and adding the violet. And you'll see that the violets are gonna get really dark super fast, so don't worry. So labeling again, that center hue is a warm brown color, which we can also shift by using more blue should we want to. And then on the violet side, you'll notice that the values are very dark, almost 
black. And if you added white, you'd see that they kind of come out gray. So this is another way we can lower the value of violet. Now, as for the yellow side, I have no better way to describe these colors than mustard colors. So that is what I call them. You can call them whatever you feel comfortable with. And last, but certainly not least, is our blue and orange complements. And again, I'm going to mix our middle value, which actually comes out as a pretty solid blue-gray. And then I'm going to create my two steps with my orange, which takes me just a bit longer because I want to make sure they're fairly even. And then I'm going to add the blue into that gray color. So this neutral center value is actually a gray blue and then on our blue sides what we ended up creating is what most people would call navy blue or dark blue so again a way to lower value and saturation of a blue color is to add orange and then on our orange side we created dark oranges which to me actually turn out as brown oranges and so that is what I'm going to label them. And voila, you have created complementary color scales for the three main complements. So now you know if you put two complements next to each other, it creates visual intensity and contrast, which can help with creating focal points. And if you mix two complements together, you lower a color's saturation and create a neutral color palette. I hope you can start applying this to your own art practice. And if you liked this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more art content or content from my own art practice, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you next time.